Hi, my name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. This time not a full tutorial, it's more a preview to a little tutorial series about workflows between Cinema 4D and 3D code and the PBR workflow for rendering the outputs. In this short preview, I want to demonstrate you how I want to approach the whole thing. I have here a little model, which I've downloaded in the internet. And then I took this model here without any UVs and I brought it over to 3D Code to make a UV unwrap there. And 3D Code is an extremely powerful tool because you have here many rooms and in every room you can do something. So for example, you have a paint room where we will paint then this grenade. We have a scud room where we can make voxel or surface sculpting, really powerful. We have a UV room where we can unwrap this object and we have also a topper room if we want to rebuild the object. So I will demonstrate to you how to unwrap here this grenade and all its parts step by step and then we bring this here over to the paint room. I've added here some smart materials. Smart materials are a really powerful technique inside of 3D code to build PBR materials and work with them. And after we have textured this grenade, you see we have here metal, scratches, plastic, and so on. We will bring the whole result, so the UV grenade and also the textures back to Cinema 3D. And there I will show you how to render these textures with the help of Corona. We have now release candidate for Beta 2 and Cycles 4D. In the moment, I'm here in Cinema 4D with Corona, and you'll see. This is my re-imported grenade. You see here now my parts and the UVs rebuilt in 3D code. And I switch here over to Corona to demonstrate you how this looks in the moment. So for this, we can use the interactive rendering. It takes a short while and then you see here, this is the grenade. And we have a really fast feedback here. And the best thing about Corona for Cinema 4D is it's extremely powerful and it's free in the moment because it's beta. You can download the beta today and start working with it. And one of the new features inside of this Corona build is now the node-based material system. So we had a cinema-like material system before here and now you can use parallel also a node-based approach, which helps if you want to texture something like this here because we have here dielectrics and conductors at the same time. So to show you this really briefly, I want to show you how to texture now this cap here. And if you take a look here in 3D code to the cap, I show you the environment here and rotate a little bit the whole thing. Then you will see that we have here a mixture from rust and uh, metal and also here these edges and this is something I want to bring over to Cinema 3D. I've exported all my maps for Corona and now we can go here and make the same here again. So I stop for a brief moment this here and I prepared for me two shaders here. These are both Corona standard materials. One is set up as a conductor and one is set up here as a dielectric. And what I do here is I copy these two because I've done these. I will show you later in the tutorial itself a little bit more how this works. And then we can now add here with the right mouse button a new material. We use a layered material because we need both components at the same time. We can name the whole thing, for example, cap. And then we can drag the cap here onto the cap. That's it. In this layered material, we can now tell the system, okay, what's the base material and what we want to mix onto it. I don't want to mix in the moment, so I say amount zero. And I want to have as a base this shader here. So we drag it here. You see here the result, and then we can start the interactive rendering again. And now you see this cap is really shiny because that's the output of this base here. Now we can start loading our textures. So I make a right mouse button click and load my images. You also can drag all the images into this field, but I do it 
manually to show you a little thing here. So I first start with my cap diffuse, it's an EXR. So it's 32 bit from 3D code. And after we've loaded this, the most important thing is that you have to understand the color space of bitmaps. So everything which really transports color information, which is reflection color or the diffuse color, has to be from the color profile sRGB. And then you see it really changed the appearance. So this is important. This is color information. So it's sRGB. And I can now connect this to the diffuse here. If you click here, you see instantly the color is now applied. And if you want to now use other things like values, for example, normal maps or the amount of glossiness, the amount of metalness, you normally don't want to work with the color profile. You want to use this linear, but you see this in a moment. So I load now the second cap information, which is the reflection color here. Like I've said, it's reflection. Reload this. We hook this up into the reflection color here. And because this is also color, we say this is sRGB. And let's go a little bit more to the cap. And now you see, yeah, the color is right, but we don't have any features on the surface. So the next thing I want to do is I want to change the glossiness. Another right mouse button click here. And this is the glossiness of the cap. And glossiness is a value. It's not color. It's only information where. And so I tag it as linear. And I bring it to the glossiness port here. And if I now take a look here, you see now it's more dull. So this glossiness works now. And the last thing we need to do here is we have to load now our normal map for the cap. Okay, there it is. This time it's linear because it's only values. And to add a normal map to a bump port here, we need a corona normal map shader between that. If you now connect this here and bring it then over to this bump here, you will see that this normal map shader helps you to set here the method and also you can flip your stuff and all of this. And now you see a little bit of the normals and if you want to increase them, go to the bump channel itself and push here the strength. This was now the dielectric, so the non-metal part. And for this, I went to the reflection here and used a Fresnel of 1.52. So that's this part and then comes the metal part. So if we now use our metal shader here and hook it up into the one, I go to the amount and say I want to have 100% of this and instantly everything vanish. Uh, the reason for this is that the base is not seen because we don't have a mask in the moment. And now you see this here is now absolutely everything is metal. And the nice thing in this node-based approach is that we can now use the same maps again because under the hood the material is the same. The only difference now is that we need a Fresnel of 999 here to bring the IOR towards the metal. And so we take the same diffuse and now we can work really fast. Then we take the same colors for the reflections. And if you take now a look, you see, yeah, looks much, much better, but much too shiny. So we take then the glossiness and bring it here to the glossy port. Now we get something like that. And the last thing is we can use the same normal map here. And if you want, you can change here the strength of the normal map. That's it. And now you see how cool is that? We get a really nice cap here inside of Corona. Look at the render speed. It's really incredible. And if you now compare this to the result I have in 3D code, depending on the environment I have here around, you will see that we get extremely close. So this will be the topic 
of the whole workflow series. I hope I will finish it in the next two weeks. If you have questions about this workflow, please let me know. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. Have fun and see you later.